There's something that has to be said about movie sequels. They just aren't as good as the originals. Of course, there are exceptions, but most of the time, sequels just can't live up to the hype. Either they follow the same formula and suffer from being too predictable, or they try something new that deviates from audiences' expectations. Audiences go to the extreme and give movies a reputation for being worse than they actually are. So I'm picking out sequels that all have their flaws, but I think have been judged unfairly. It's Cinemassacre's Top 10 Sequels That Aren't As Bad As Everyone Says. Number 10, The Lost World, Jurassic Park. The reaction was kind of mixed, but I think anyone would agree it's not as good as the first. It just doesn't have the same feel. I think it feels a bit more like a remake of the classic Lost World from 1925, where explorers encounter dinosaurs in an uncharted land and bring one of them back. It's the basic formula for a monster movie. It seems like Spielberg was trying to recreate that. In this regard, it works. But as a sequel to Jurassic Park, it falls short. The human characters are boring, but the dinosaurs are still fun to watch, and the action scenes are thrilling. When the T-Rex got loose in San Diego, I thought that was pretty cool. Overall, it's good entertainment. Number 9, Ghostbusters 2. Whenever this movie comes up in a conversation, everybody's quick to dismiss it. It's definitely not as good as the first, but that was a tough act to follow. There's no way they could have matched the same level of charm and delicate humor a second time around. It just couldn't be done, but they sure tried. The only criticism I have is that it borrows too heavily from the original. It plays it safe and takes no risks. But it's just as epic as ever. A river of slime flowing underneath the city, feeding on everyone's negative emotions. A Carpathian spirit that's going to bring about the end of the world on New Year's Day. Rain, uh, we'd like to shoot the monster. Could you move, please? There's plenty of great gags, like when the Titanic arrives. And the humor is still on key with the original. Ray and Egon spit out enough technical jargon to keep you laughing. You think there's a connection between this Vigo character and the fly? The atomic weight of cobalt, 58.9. And Peter Venkman is just as funny as ever. Well, what do you think? He's... Well, he's ugly. And Louis Tolley hasn't lost one ounce of his humorous persona. My guys are still under a judicial estrangement order. That blue thing I got from her. They could be exposing themselves. And you don't want us exposing ourselves. If you liked the first one, I say give the second one a chance. Number eight. Terminator 3. Terminator 2 was one of the best movies ever made, so I can't even believe they made a third movie. The second one ended the story, they destroyed Cyberdyne, wiped out all traces of the Terminator, and prevented Judgment Day. James Cameron tied that knot so tight that when the third movie came along, they had no choice but to cheat the mythology a little, just so a third movie would even be possible. But we stopped Judgment Day. You only postponed it. Judgment Day is inevitable. I think the main problem with this movie is that it copied the same format as the other films. It doesn't do anything new. But as an action movie, it's a blast. The scene where the Terminator's hanging on a crane is one of the best action scenes from the past decade. It's meant to be seen on a big screen with a good sound system. In other words, it was best in the theater. The Terminator can be really funny, too. The levity is good. It relieves tension and the fear of death. And it's not like there was no comedy relief in the second movie, either. Chill out, dickwad. If you enjoy it for what it is, it's entertaining as hell. You are terminated. Number 7, Gremlins 2. I'm not sure why everyone disapproves of it so much. I guess because it's so wild and crazy. But to me, that's what a Gremlins movie is supposed to be. It obviously doesn't match the subtle charm of the original, and they were aware of it. So instead, they sort of spoof the original. They make fun of the don't feed them after midnight rule. There's Gremlins attacking film critic Leonard Maltin. There's parents complaining in the theater lobby. And there's Hulk Hogan yelling at the Gremlins to turn the projector back on. With the Gremlin characters, they raised the bar this time. There's a spider gremlin, an electric gremlin, a bat gremlin, and many more. There's an Al Lewis wannabe playing a Dracula host, and speaking of Dracula, there's Christopher Lee playing a mad scientist. You can't go wrong there. My favorite character is a business tycoon named Daniel Clamp, who's obsessed with modern advancements. He's the opposite of the old man from the first movie who hated technology. 
Clamp is the head of this huge futuristic office building. Every room has some kind of voice speaking to you. There's revolving doors moving on their own. It's all just unnecessary technology, and it's such a pleasure to see the gremlins destroy this place. Number six, Psycho 2. You don't even have to watch it to determine its fate. You're probably thinking the same thing I did. Psycho 2? Are you kidding me? It's in color, it's made 23 years after the original, and three years after the death of Alfred Hitchcock. Sounds like they just waited for him to die. Well, the author of the original novel actually wrote another book, too. It was after Hitchcock's death, but before the movie was made. In the novel's sequel, Hollywood is making a movie based on Norman Bates. Apparently, the studio hated the book because it was making fun of all the slasher movies that Psycho had spawned. So the screenplay was written without any input from the author. Psycho 2 is really not that bad a movie. Anthony Perkins returns to his signature role as Norman Bates, and he still does a good job. He's sympathetic this time around, playing an insane character that's trying to fit back into society. The plot contains enough twists to keep it interesting, and the suspense is high. It's definitely better than lots of the other slasher sequels that were going on at the time. But if you compare it with the original, it's doomed. Good sequel, but Psycho 3 and 4? Forget about them. Number 5. Back to the Future 3. I admit that when I first saw this movie, I didn't really like it. I guess because the first two are so tightly wrapped together, it made the third seem more distant. Taking place in 1885 with the Wild West theme made it stick out like the black sheep of the series. But it's grown on me, and now I think it's pretty good, so I say give it another chance. Sure, the Clara character was a little annoying, Dolly. but the Doc is just as fascinating as ever. It's interesting to see him try to work in such an old-fashioned time period. He has to build an enormous machine just to produce one ice cube. Ice tea? The dialogue between Doc and Marty is still just as funny and intriguing as always. It wraps up the trilogy nicely and presents a satisfying closure to the story. Every time I watch it, I notice something new. Like that. What's the kid doing? Number 4. Rocky V. I haven't heard anyone say one good thing about this movie. Even Sylvester Stallone despises it and gave it a rating of zero, which is hilarious. Rocky V. Uh, zero. That was it? That bad, Rocky V? Yeah, it was bad. It's definitely the worst of the series, but come on, it's not that bad. They at least gave it a good shot and tried real hard to recapture the spirit of the original. John Avildsen returns as the director, they bring Rocky back to his humble roots, he's wearing his old clothes, Adrian's working at the pet shop again, and Mickey returns for a flashback. Still, it didn't cut it, I know, but they tried. Oh, well, Rocky, you need some help? No, guys, ain't no pie in contest. I think the biggest flaw is the meat-headed attitude it portrays, where fighting is the answer to everything. Rocky's son gets picked on by a bully, and the solution is to hit some bags, come back, and punch the kid out. And the street fight at the end, Rocky vs. Tommy Gunn, even though I love this scene, there's no reason for it. It doesn't solve anything. Rocky's still broke, and Tommy's still the champ. But you gotta admit, it is exciting to see Rocky get into a real fight outside the ring for once. Bottom line, crappy movie, but great ending. Judgment, I'll suit. Sue for what? Number three, Spider-Man 3. When I saw this movie in the theater, I really had no idea it was going to be one of those kind of movies that everybody hates. From what I've gathered, the big issue was Venom. Spider-Man fans were really looking forward to this character. Sam Raimi had no intention of using him, so Venom was thrown in at the last minute just to satisfy the fans, but only to have them backlash. To me, the main villain of the movie is actually Spider-Man. He's arrogant, he's vengeful, and basically he's gone mad. So when he tears off the black suit, it's like he takes out his inner demon into an external form that he can actually face. So it wasn't really about fighting Venom, it was about fighting the thing that corrupted him. Other than that, it's all nitpicking. Spider-Man goes emo and there's a few dancing scenes. It's all everybody talks about. Did everyone fall asleep during the good parts? What about when Spider-Man's fighting Sandman in the subway? That was awesome! Everyone says they crammed too much into this movie. Maybe so, but that's what I enjoyed about it. It's fast-paced and there's lots of shit happening. 
It's a story of revenge. Spider-Man blames the Sandman for the death of his uncle, and Harry Osborn blames Spider-Man for the death of his father. In the end, they all have to learn the facts and forgive each other. I think that's pretty cool, because it's not often you get to see a hero and villain come to an agreement. I think it's a satisfying finale to the trilogy. It has its faults, it could have been better, but horrible? I don't think so. Number 2. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. I have not once ever heard anyone criticize this movie without focusing their entire criticism on the fact that Michael Myers is not in it. I'm surprised no one complains about Season of the Witch. There's no witches in the movie. Let me start off by saying the Halloween series should have ended right after 2. The first one was an accidental masterpiece and stands alone. But it ends on a cliffhanger, so if you really want to see what happens, that's why we have 2. It continues the story and wraps it up. To put it bluntly, they kill Michael Myers. Both he and Dr. Loomis are blown away in a fiery explosion. The last we see of Michael, he's a burning corpse. That's deader than he's ever been in the whole series. That should have been sequel proof. So, they decide to take the series in a different direction and make it an anthology series, each with a different Halloween-themed story. Imagine all the things that could happen on Halloween. I think it would have been far more interesting if they continued in this direction instead of rehashing the same Michael Myers story over and over again. Yeah, looking back, with all the sequels that have come after it, it doesn't make sense to call it Halloween 3 anymore, especially when they stopped numbering the sequels after 5 anyway. And it's even more confusing for most people that the first two movies had Michael Myers. They both took place the same night and are very much like a two-parter. So the third movie sticks out like a sore thumb. So forget that it's a sequel to Halloween because it really isn't. And don't think of it as a slasher movie because it's not. It's about an evil mastermind who wants to return Halloween to its sacrificial origins. The Festival of Samhain. The last great one took place 3,000 years ago when the hills ran red with the blood of animals and children. This is a guy who celebrates Halloween hardcore. The synthesizer music is really creepy and gives the movie its haunting atmosphere. The death scenes are really grotesque. Tell me this movie doesn't have balls. It shows kids getting killed. It uses Halloween as a consumer device, a corporate giant that literally devours all the children. It's a different kind of Halloween movie that should be appreciated in its own right. Number one, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. In recent years, I have never heard so much hatred for a motion picture. The gophers, the fridge, the monkeys, the alien. I get it. With the gophers and the monkeys, it's only a few seconds. The fridge, yeah, okay, it went a little far-fetched, as if nothing far-fetched ever happened before in an Indiana Jones movie. Of course you can't survive a nuclear bomb, it's just a fucking movie. You also can't survive flying off a cliff on a tank, or dropping out of a plane on a rubber raft and sliding off a mountain slope. It's common knowledge that Spielberg was inspired by the James Bond franchise, a guy who escaped near-death situations all the time. That's what it's all about. About the alien? Did it really come as that much of a surprise? It's practically in the title, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Did anyone do their homework? Did anyone know that the Crystal Skulls are believed to be extraterrestrial? There were tons of documentaries on TV in preparation for this movie's release. I guess nobody watched them. The only thing I hated about the alien was that it was CG. The design of the alien is obviously a tribute to the 1950s B-movies like Invasion of the Saucer Men. And since this movie takes place in the 50s, I can see what they're going for. But there is no CG in the 50s, and that's what makes it look so out of place. Either make it look classic, or do something entirely original. The audience consensus went further to say that aliens simply don't belong in an Indiana Jones movie. I wouldn't go that far. Aren't the Indiana Jones movies all about fantasy? We have ghosts that come out of an ark that melt and explode people's faces, voodoo dolls, hearts being ripped out of people's chests, and a knight who sits in a cave for hundreds of years guarding the Holy Grail. But there's a no extraterrestrial policy? People back up their argument by saying that the rest of the indie movies all focused on a religious artifact. No, no, God's head is not like that, man. Depends on who your God is. 
Exactly. Depends who your god is. It's all about a higher power. I mean, he found the Holy Grail already. How do you top that? I don't know what everyone expected. The only reason you see a movie like this is for the nostalgia factor. After 20 years, I never thought they'd make another Indiana Jones film, so it was just a nice little treat to be able to see one on the big screen. The way they revealed Indy, I thought, was really cool, the way they keep you in suspense. First you see his hat, then his shadow, and then, welcome back, my man. Take Harrison Ford out of the picture, and it's just your average shitty action flick. Everyone seems to forget what Indiana Jones was all about in the first place. It was a tribute to B-movies and old adventure serials. You check your brain at the door, sit down, and enjoy. I got a genuine impression that Spielberg and Lucas were having fun with it. I got a carefree feeling that I was sitting at an old-time Saturday matinee. Bottom line, the movie was okay. It's not a masterpiece by any means, and it's nowhere near as good as Raiders or Crusade. But who would have expected it to be? The old Indiana Jones movies were classics. There is a South Park episode in which Spielberg and Lucas rape Indiana Jones. South Park's a clever show, and it wasn't just making fun of the movie, but the audience reaction as well. Oh God, what have they done? Why aliens? Aliens don't belong in an Indiana Jones movie! Do you remember that scene with Indiana in the refrigerator? It didn't make any sense, Dad. It's so true. Is that how we critique movies nowadays? By just ranting and nitpicking about all the individual moments we hated? Or do we look at the big picture as a whole? There's a positive and negative to weigh here. Some people seem to follow whatever opinion seems the most popular. This is Cinemassacre saying, think for yourself.